Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Good evening on this Good Friday. This is NTV's talk show, Talking Point. I'm your host, Syed Nihal Ahmed. In our studios today, we have a gentleman. He's by profession, by profession an accountant, but by vocation and belief, a social worker. He has been associated with the Tower Hamlets activities for over the last 20, 30, 40 years. He has been also involved in Boishaki Mela, in youth empowerment, female empowerment, and many other cultural and business activities. Welcome to the show, Mr. Muhammad Rauf. Thank How you are very you, much. sir? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. In your show. You are one of the gentlemen whom I should have invited long time ago. Still? <laughs> but you are shuttling between London and LA. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, still never late. Uh -huh. uh, you, you were born in Sillet and you got educated, initial commerce graduation you did from Madan Mohan College, the famous college. And then you came over to London to study, yeah. study higher studies in accountancy, yeah. which you did. And then, apart from that, in those heady days of 1970s, you took active part in uh, activities that would be described now as Mukti Juddha. Yeah, freedom fighter. In one yes. form, yes. freedom fighter. You took part in anti AU movement during the liberation of Bangladesh in 1971. Could you tell us something about how was life for you those days? How was the life for Bangladeshis living here, Bengalis living here in this country? Well, that was more or less the preliminary stage of Bengalis in this country. Mm -hmm. Although um, people came from Bangladesh during 1920s, 30s, 40s, mm -hmm. 50s, Actual influx happened in the 60s, in the 60s, 70s. Uh, life was not, I wouldn't say that it was very pleasant for mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. for the Bangladeshi people came in this country that time. Uh, the living accommodations are very low graded. Mm -hmm. Even you will be surprised to know that in, in Tower Hamlet, mm -hmm. well, Tower Hamlet is the concentration of Bengali right. people we know for facts. In Tower Hamlet, the, uh, the, the houses, the private houses were without toilet, without bathroom. Can you imagine that? In uh, around mm -hmm. Brick Lane. Mm -hmm. so, so how so, that problem was solved? So when uh, well, in late uh, uh, seven, uh, late sixties, um, the they they added toilet facilities, mm -hmm. some houses, but still the uh, uh, other bathroom facilities were yeah. absent that yeah, time. Public baths. Then people used to go to public bath, pay money, mm -hmm. and do their uh, cleaning business there. So. You can imagine what sort of life people used to lead, mm -hmm. lead, lead that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, life wasn't that brilliantly good for uh, the poor people. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, people, uh, all, most of the immigrant people are poor. This well, is why they you, came Were you welcome uh, or there was any element of racism? Oh, there? very much so. Um, not welcome, I wouldn't say that. Uh, because that time the BNP was very strong, other yeah, racist organizations were strong. Is, uh, oh, not BNP in Bangladesh, <laughs> but BNP, uh, British National Party. Right. Um, British National Party were very strong. They are, still they are hateful to uh, uh, our colors. Mm -hmm. um, there was, uh, you pro definitely you heard about Pakibashis, mm -hmm. they used to call everybody's Paki, those who are yeah. living in this area, Pakibashis. Uh, they uh, unnecessarily, they used to um, provoke, 
provoke us, provoke our people, uh, those who, our people usually, they are not that much conversant uh, about uh, English. The speaking yeah, yeah. English yeah, yeah. wasn't that good. Uh -huh. um, uh, <coughs> the people were, although they can speak Bangla, but English speaking people were very few. So uh, they couldn't, because, well, they are going, uh, walking in the street, the uh, 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 boys, 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 or even girls, they come to your, uh, uh, near to you, and probably they are joking with you, and you are not that much familiar with them, so mm -hmm. you just try to avoid them, but mm -hmm. they will not let you avoid uh, yeah, yeah. them, so they just will push you, then uh, they will probably hit you as well. Mm -hmm. I have I have seen a lot of people uh, hit by these um, racist attacks and uh, they have got uh, bruise mm -hmm. uh, in the mm -hmm. face, mm -hmm. in the chest and everywhere. And that was, it was a very bad time for our people mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. sort of time because they come, they used to come in organized way, mm -hmm. not um, isolated way, they, come, they used to come I, uh, organized way to hit and to humiliate our people right. that time. They used to spit on you. Mm -hmm. You just going, uh, not doing anything. You, you, I mean, our people were that peace-loving yep. people. Yep. Always they were like that. But they were subject of a lot of humiliation. Right. See. How, how did you confront it? I mean, how did you come over it? Um, well, in the beginning, People used to avoid, okay, they uh, hit you, they humiliate you, you just go home and... You, would you report it to the police? Uh, not all, all, all of them can report it because people used to think, oh, if, we, if I go to the police, it may be another problem coming, I have to tell them, because they are not very much, uh, very good at uh, the language, English. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't make them understand, mm -hmm. so it may react in a different way, right. adverse way. So most of the people, they said, okay, I will not go to the police, I will not complain, I just stay home. Yep. Uh, so, but some, there were, there were complaints, yes, mm -hmm. there were complaints, but uh, probably percentage was very few percentage, 10% maybe, right. uh, given. But eventually, eventually when, uh, I'm talking, uh, that period was people came here single, as a single person. Right. Their families, their uh, 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 boys and girls, their children are right. not in this country. They mm -hmm. are in Bangladesh probably. When the children came in this country and when they started to learn English in the school and uh, everywhere, they, uh, children are fast to learn yes. the language they started to uh, react against it. Uh, when they, of course, go to the police, if police do not take uh, action, they wanted to take action by themselves. They started to be organized in Tower 100, I'm talking about, right. uh, well, self-defense courses. When, when did we have this uh, police station in, uh, in Brick Lane? Uh, early, I think early 70s, 80s, 80s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Police station. So did it that make a difference? Little bit different. It was first there was a, a prefabric uh, a room mm -hmm. near to well, actually by the side of my office, 68 Brick Lane. 68 Brick Lane was my office, mm -hmm. and just next to it there was an empty place, and there they have started a small office. Right. And um, I think about uh, 90s, during 90s, I think they have got uh, the present uh, police station they've got uh, from the council, mm -hmm. that uh, room, and they've uh, shifted that place to there. And it makes little bit difference, little bit difference because police are in Brick Lane if there is any big uh, uh, raci racism uh, or racist attack or anything, right. they can inform their um, head of his quickly. Uh, we will talk about uh, this uh, later because uh, I'm sure that you have discussed these things in your book that we have here.
Uh, one of your books uh, about uh, the role of uh, the diaspora, Bangladeshi diaspora. Can we show this uh, on the screen, this book? Yes, it's called Titiyo Bangla Mukti Jiddo, uh, the freedom fight in third Bengal. We used to, yep. well, still uh, uh, Britain yep. is called third Bang Bengal because can you focus it? Can you just uh, zoom it, please? Outside Bangladesh and Kolkata, the biggest concentration is in England. Right. This is, how, this is why we call it Third Bangla. Right. <coughs> and uh, now, let us talk about uh, you were a young person at that time. You had come to uh, England in 1968. 68. And then this, uh, all this uh, problem started, this, all the trouble back home in Dhaka. Yeah. In 1968, I think Ayub Khan was toppled. And then came. 69, yeah. Yes, 68, 69. Mm -hmm. And then all the problems started here. Uh, what was the role of the Bangladeshi community at that time in UK, in Europe? Uh, as you said, there was a considerable large, large uh, uh, concentration, concentration of Bangladeshis yes, yes, yes. Uh, living here. Uh, I understand. I heard that there was a very active role that you played. Yep. Um, I was in, uh, uh, I was associated with the student politics when I was in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. student politics. Then I came over here and I found my like-minded like -minded students yep. also in this country. And we have, uh, in an organized way, we started mm -hmm. um, to meet together mm -hmm. to see how we can be helpful to the cause of the movement back home. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, October 1968, I think, the 11 point movement of the students are started in, mm -hmm. in Dhaka against Ayub Khan. And that uh, movement toppled him in early 69. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> We were the student, mm -hmm. students mainly, first of all, students in this country mainly um, started to organize, mm -hmm. organize uh, against this military government, even against the Ahia government as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And we were doing as much as possible. We have a, a probably 91 Highbury Hill, Bangladesh House, we used to call it. It was, uh, that was the center point of our students. We have, we want to, we, well, we do our, we made that place as some sort of office of mm -hmm. our movements. Uh, usually, the Chesham's place has the uh, Pakistan students yeah. uh, uh, hostel. 15 Chesham place. 15. Yes. There was the main concentration of or main focus of the student movement. But yeah. because that was nearly controlled by the West Pakistani yeah. students, yeah. our Bengali students are a bit isolated. Mm -hmm. They couldn't push us out, but you can feel that there is a division there. Right. So we, I mean, our Bengali students, they made uh, their way to 91 Haibari Hill, the Bangladesh house, which was bought in 1964 by our uh, donation, by mm -hmm. our, mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, the then uh, uh, community leaders, they paid uh, for that place. And that uh, became uh, mostly the, Office of the student movement, Bengali Bengali student movement, mm -hmm. you can call it, mm -hmm. and uh, that served. Uh, but I'm I'm very sad when uh, that place is sold without repairing, mm -hmm. and now it is nowhere. There is no such thing of Bangladesh House or anything like that. Right. Uh, we need to take a break, and then when we come back, yeah. we'll come to some. Uh, good, good, good topics, and, uh, not on the sad end. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us, and I hope, I hope that uh, you will be with us uh, after this break. Thank you. Thank you.